In the beginning was the three-pointed star, one smile of light across the empty face, one bow of bone across the rooting air, the substance forked that marrowed the first sun, and burning ciphers on the round of space, heaven and hell mixed as they spun. Welcome to Cop on Podcast, you juicy and particularly vividly coloured pumpkin. Uh, Brian is here from Hong Kong, Doug is here from Scotland, Nigel is here from Ireland. Um, I'm Owen, I'm in France, and I've just become a dad for the very first time. So those opening lines from a poem called In the Beginning by Dylan Thomas are dedicated to my beautiful baby boy, Reuben. I wanted to call him Jürgen Mohammed, but unfortunately, that idea was quashed. Speaking of quashing, Liverpool beat Leicester City 3-0 yesterday with two goals by a man who is enjoying his proper breakout spell in the first team, Curtis Jones, and one goal from another scouser in the team, which means that you can take your poverty chanting, you can take your tragedy chanting, and you can shove them both right up your ass. Then you can, I don't know, take a firework and shove that up your ass too, light the firework, and see what happens. See where you end up, which planet you go on, because you're not welcome on this one. Idiots. So they got what they deserved, a 3-0 smashing. Um, Brian, 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 it's 11.20 at night in, in, in Hong Kong. You've had, you've had an entire day to digest this and night and Liverpool's resurgent seven wins in a row. Are you thrilled? Are you happy? Are you thinking next season we're going to top all those financial doper dopes of Manchester City? You, you want to talk about anything you want, Curtis, Trent, go wherever you like. Well, I'm really, really happy for Curtis because, you know, hands up, I, I, I was writing them off. I, I was uh, saying that that, that uh, ship had sailed. And uh, fair play to him. He's really putting um, putting the flag down and his performance has been excellent. And I, I'm just glad that we're back to having something to look forward to. We're, we're, we're part of it again. And uh, the identity and, and I'm looking forward to every game. And, uh, you know, if any team could do the crazy things, it's us, right? So we were written off uh, a month ago. People are laughing at us. You know, it's, it's over. It's not over. <laughs> and we're breathing right down their necks. And I'm, you know, worst case scenario, it's going to be the biggest party in Dublin in the world has ever seen. So, uh, every, you know, all my mates are happy right now. Uh, about where we're at now, you know, and, and it's great to get back into winning ways. So I'm just enjoying the football again. Beautiful stuff. And yes, you were alluding to the, of course, the the top four, the Champions League race. Doug is here from the Dugout Football Channel. Doug, welcome back. Um, what percentage chance would you give Liverpool of now getting to that top four place? Because I did see a, a stat on Reddit, although it didn't have the source, which is a bit, um, you know, a bit, bit frustrating because I don't know where it came from but some website somewhere said that we have a 37 percent chance of getting top four I would put it more in the like five to ten percent chance because I just I mean even 10 would be optimistic but we, we still have a chance I don't know how are you feeling Doug yeah feeling good um good win last night um against the very poor Leicester City side I think it has to be said they were very very uh, poor and they look a team devoid of ideas, devoid of confidence and that's a team of individuals there um, at uh, Leicester and um, I think they are now going to go, get relegated um, I mean it's quite it's quite amazing in the space of 18 months after them winning the, the FA Cup they now sit, they find themselves in 19th place but um, obviously apart from obviously all the you know the, the, the chanting um, yesterday I would give us at least I was thinking of this last day. I'm going to give us a 15% chance of getting okay. in the top four. I think if you look at the way that, uh, you know, Brian played against Arsenal on Sunday, that kind of gives me a little bit of confidence that they can go to Newcastle and maybe get a, maybe get something um, from, from that game. Um, I wouldn't bag 
Newcastle against Leicester. I've, I've got to say, I wouldn't back Leicester at Newcastle anyway. So uh, the Chelsea game is the one where I think we may look to and, and see where they, where there could be. But this could easily come down to the final day. This could easily come down to the final day. Um, but fantastic win yesterday. And I think Curtis Jones is in a new lease of life in that, in that position where he's been playing. And I've been saying all along, he needs to add goals to his game. And I think with the goals he scores for England, the sort of the similar goals that he scored yesterday were sort of the goals that he scores for you know England as well. So I am just hoping now that he can add more goals to his game because I think if we if he does that, then he definitely has a future at Liverpool Football Club. And, and definitely looking ahead to next season, um, he can be a very important player for us. I think so too, you know, with Bay Chetic back, you know, you're talking about a remodelled midfield with Trent there as well. It's all very exciting. Two goals from, from Curtis and, and the goal. We'll look at the goals in a minute. But Nigel, how are you feeling about it all? Just, you know, in terms of the top four race, just to remind everybody, Newcastle, as, as Doug was saying, they've got to play Brighton at home. So Newcastle are at home. Then they're at home to Leicester City and then they're away to Chelsea. Those are the last three Newcastle fixtures. Man United have three games left as well. They're away to Bournemouth, who beat us 1-0 at Bournemouth. If you know, if your brains hadn't uh, hadn't wiped that fact out of out of uh, out of your mind. Um uh, so United are away to Bournemouth and at home to Chelsea and then at home to Fulham. I don't know. I'm not that optimistic. But what I am optimistic about, what's more important to me, is this resurgence of confidence and this resurgence and, and the new identity that we would be we were crying out for for a, such a long time. Changes of formation. Nigel, you were going on about it for, for ages. Changes of formation. You must be infused about it. Oh, absolutely. The fact that we've got any chance at all of making top four is the, the change in formation. And Trent's, Trent been moved, and Curtis Jones sudden uh, bounce, shall we call it, uh, has been key. I think um, it's taken pressure off our strikers, and we had this discussion there. I think last week that Cody Gakpo dropping off, and then it allows. We got to remember. I'm going back now. This is going to be a completely different team just for a couple of minutes. I'm going to just. Uh, 1971, Arsenal had this 19-year-old striker who won a double with them in 1971. Liverpool bought him in 1974 and the great Bob Paisley turned him from a central striker into a left-sided midfield player who used to like, arrive late in the box. Then we had a couple of other guys. That, that was Ray Kennedy. We had a couple of other guys. Stephen Gerrard used to arrive, arrive late in the box. Ronnie Whelan arrived late in the box. Look at Curtis Jones' first goal last night and the first goal he scored against Spurs. Arriving late at the back post into the box. Absolute resurgence for the lad. Delighted for him. We wanted more input from him. And he's been absolutely fabulous the last few games. So it can only be good for the club. Yeah, very interesting point. Absolutely, yeah. Ray Kennedy ghosting from the left at the the finish as well. That first goal. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, let's uh, you know cast your minds back. Um, we won the ball back thanks we thanks to a really good offside line, and I think that our defending three clean sheets in a row now that's also something worth mentioning. Um, but it was a really good offside line, if you remember, that caught Jamie Vardy offside. It was about halfway into our half, basically, you know, halfway between our goal line and the halfway line. Um, and it was a super offside. So we, we won the ball back. And then Alisson got it. He, he, he went long. Um, without face, who in two matches has scored two goals and played, played a key moment in, in, in a goal for us. So he's like, shout out for player of the season. Um, he hesitated. He let the ball bounce. Then Henderson managed to find Mo. Mo with his beautiful ball, allowing Curtis to finish first time. So similar to that goal he scored before, but but it was a superb finish, Brian. It's the coolness. It's the calmness. It's that kind of thing that is is really good. But also the the Mo Salah. You know the the past three assists yesterday. He's actually moved up to. And let me get this fact correct i've got the the stats in front of me he's equal 
uh, one, two, three, four, five, six on our all time assist makers. Well, sorry, not all time since 1969 70 season, because we, we, we forget the 1920 invincibles, we don't know. But from nfchistory.net, he's equal sixth with 72 assists. Uh, for you know, in all in all competitions, incredible, Brian. The pass, Mo Salah, the vision, and Curtis, as Nigel was saying, running in on the back post. It's it's looking good. It's looking good. How do you feel about that goal? Did you celebrate wildly, or were you just uh, I don't know? Yeah, no, I did. Um, I, I I'm liking what I'm seeing. I I, I think uh, Mo has definitely. I mean, Mo's always been great, he's a machine, but he's he's having more of an effect on the game, uh, I find, in the past uh, five or six games. It's all around uh, input to the team, not just as a out-and-out -out kind of goal-scoring threat. And uh, that goal, and it's the second, I'm right, it's the second finish like that. He's he's finished it off first time in, in a couple of weeks. And you don't see those goals. I mean, I watch most of the games most weekends. You know, I watch. I definitely watch the highlights. And th th those uh, those balls over the top to, to the oncoming striker or a midfield player arriving late, you don't see them very often. And that's almost twice in a week now that he's done that. And uh, yeah, it's. Uh, and I noticed. That I think. Um, I think Trent is having a, an effect on the on the team. Him being in the middle of the pitch. The. the the creativity that he's it's like he's playing fifa <laughs> you know he's just he just looks up but he goes oh just through ball overhead plus the, oh and he does he, that ball's coming over all oh, time and time and again now and i imagine it must be putting the absolute shits off defenses knowing that we're not just going to pass it from left to right to left to middle that at any moment we can just go straight over the top and there'll be runners so uh yeah no absolutely brilliant and and genuinely delighted for the lad as well uh he, he's been great absolutely yeah beautifully well said yeah he, he has been great and it's just i don't know the coolness the coolness of it all i uh, love it to have people with it in the chat here we've got gary richards tally ho gary mr boombastic says doug that's quite the t-shirt and for the audio listeners doug has an absolutely fabulous minions t-shirt that's uh from uh it's from it's from heaven you know the wb8 the cloths of heaven that's what he was dreaming of absolutely and uh graham rogers is here he said i had mixed feelings about the leicester game i so want everton to go down not forever, just for 20 or 30 years. And yes, Graham, I totally get that as well. But if we end up in, in the Champions League, it will be worth it, surely. And uh, Alan's in the chat as well. Great to have you with us. And, and Han of Scouse, hello. Good afternoon or good early evening or good night or whatever, wherever you are. Who, whoever you are, wherever you are, everybody is welcome here. The second goal. The second goal was, uh, you know, a few minutes later, meaning that in four minutes, against Leicester City, Curtis Jones scored more Premier League goals than Richarlison has all season in four minutes, uh, which is all, always good fun, Doug. But that second goal, it started from a throw-in on the far side. Trent took the throw-in. We worked it back to Ibu Konate, who threaded a very clever... I love the rolled vertical passes that go about 15, 20 yards from defence through the gaps, giving it to... to forward towards Gakpo who then because he's so clever his turn was absolutely beautiful if you watch that goal back in case you don't remember what I'm talking about Konate passing to Gakpo and he does this little turn and suddenly instead of Leicester having you know seven players behind the ball they've suddenly got three and you know three maybe four but he, he passes it quickly to, to Mo so this is all happening in a flash you know Gakpo does his beautiful turn. He flees it quickly to Mo, who plays it first time to Curtis, who's touch and shot. For me, it was like Ian Rush. The speed of thought, Doug, the speed of movement and the speed of touch. Three things we've been lacking all season. And with the verve of the youth of Curtis Jones and Gakpo, 22, 23 years old, this is very exciting. What do you reckon, Doug? Yeah, very exciting, and you know uh, that's a man in form at the moment. Curtis Jones, like Curtis Jones, for me has been one of our best players recently, uh, along with along with Trent as well. And 
I said a couple of months ago that Curtis Jones, when he wasn't obviously again in the team, I said he was at a bit of a crossroads in his situation because his progression has kind of stagnated. When you look at like players like Harvey Elliott, his, his progression's gone up um, ever so slightly. But Curtis Jones, for me, was excellent yesterday. Um, I've got to say, Gagpo has really, really stepped up to now. I think a lot of people... Uh, we're stupidly writing him off um, after three games. And, you know, I, I think we look at Gagpo now, he's definitely going to be the, um, he's definitely going to be the, the you know, the Firmino replacement all, almost for me. Um, it's just, his, it's not just his touch, it's, it's going at defenders as well. It's, it's, it's his pace as well, which is very, very good. And, you know, Curtis Jones, he's not a striker, but I'll tell you what, that was a striker's finish yesterday. Like, the, the way he took it from from Salah, taking it away from, obviously, about Bayes um, and, obviously, Johnny Evans, and it's a fantastic finish uh, past um, Iverson. But I always had a feeling, if they conceded first, I always had a feeling that we would go on and get a couple more because, defensively, they, they haven't kept a clean sheet pre-World Cup. So that shows how bad Leicester have been this season. Is they've not kept a clean sheet pre World Cup. So the more, the more, the more we keep. Sorry, sorry to judge, I think it's twenty two matches without a clean sheet. Yeah, yeah, 20, 22 matches, uh, and that's obviously I think going before obviously the, I think the World Cup started as well. So you can see where sort of Leicester's problems have been all season as well. But but taking nothing away from. The finish from, uh, from from Curtis Jones and I, I keep saying it if he can add goals to his game he will be up there for you know assists and top scorers etc as well the, the way he's been playing and I think I think the way that he's been playing and I think the way he has been integrated into a, a more sort of attacking sort of role that he has been on that left hand side I think he's making his game a lot lot better Totally excellent stuff. Yeah, beautiful answer. Um, you know, the second goal for Curtis in just a few minutes. Um, Nigel, um, Doug mentioned Cody Gakpo. I put him on the screen there. Um, in the middle, but of course, the crowd were singing for 10 minutes non stop this beautiful chant of Bobby Firmino in the second half. And you know, you can see his smile, the emotional moment because you know, it's Saturday's going to be his last game at Anfield or Sunday, whenever the next game is against Villa. It's going to be his last game against Anfield. That's that's really sad. But uh, but this guy stepping in to his his shoes, and he's looking like you know I was so worried for so many years, you know, since about twenty eighteen that we're not going to be able to find any kind of replacement for Bobby Firmino. But we've got one, Nigel. Yes, we do. A different player, but an effective player in that role. He's like he can play three or four different roles. He can play wide. He can play down the middle, but now we can we can see he can see drop back into the into the hole and bring players into the game as well. In, an intelligent player. Um, just go back to Curtis Jones' second goal for a minute. Um, we've been talking all season about the way we've been playing, and suddenly when the confidence comes back, we're putting the ball in front of our players again. Curtis Jones got that ball, his first touch on the half turn set it up for the shot, set it up for the early shot. And like when he's confident, anybody who'd seen him playing for the under-18s and under-23s knew what he was capable of for the last few years before. And that's that was the big frustration for a lot of people. They've been watching him play for the 23s and the 18s, and he was scoring these absolutely wonderful goals. He scored that brilliant goal in the Cup against Everton that time. And there was kind of a lack of this kind of thing. But if we play like that and we get Curtis Jones playing like that, ball in front of him on the half turn, he's going to be a dangerous, dangerous player to watch over the last few, next few years. Um, back to Cody Gakpo again, a vital cog in the way we're playing at the moment and ongoing. So sad to see Bobby going. Um, been absolutely legendary for us down the, since his arrival. Um, I got that. You, I sent you a picture of that magazine this morning that I got. Um, it's a Bobby tribute special from it's an official uh, through the club uh, magazine. So um, 
just he was one of my favourite players. I'm not just saying in the current team, one of my favourite players ever. Absolutely love Bobby. Um, that 20 minute rendition of his song last night and his smile and his reaction at the end. I tell you one thing, Saturday is going to be emotional. Whether he gets on or not, him and James Milner and a couple of others that are going as well should be given big send-offs. Um, it's always tough last game of the season. I remember Jeannie and uh, People. and Dave getting big send-offs last day in the last season. Well, this is this is going to be the I think going to be the send-off of all send-offs. I remember Sammy Hoopy getting a, a huge send-off, Stephen Gerrard getting a huge send-off. This is going to be up there with them, no doubt. I mean, the crowd, they're just going to sing it for 90 minutes, aren't they? Forget the result, forget what's happening on the pitch. It's Bobby's Day, International Bobby Day. Um, Yeah, totally right. Um, Cody Gakpo in the Premier League, then six goals and two assists in 19 matches. It's goal every three games, basically. Uh, But it's his danger and it's the way that he's knitting things and also the pressing. Very impressive yesterday. Very, very, very impressive. But let's move on to the third goal, Brian. The third goal, Trent. Um, I had, uh, you know, little baby Ruben um, having a nap. It took all of my uh, self-control that I could possibly muster, the the greatest self-control to not scream like Doc Cotton when she found her son overdosed on heroin. (laughs) It was... You know, it, it it was a great goal, and I've watched the. Yeah. There's a gif on Twitter of someone just from the perfect angle from behind his foot, you know, curling into the top corner. I've seen that gif about a thousand times. Have you have you have you have you watched it back many times already, Brian? Oh, amazing, amazing! And then the the, the little um, was it Mo who who sent the ball rolling? Um, who yes, was the, it was who, the, the little back the, heel. Yes. Just a perfect pace, and uh, yeah, it was like a Alan Partridge moment back of the net. It was an absolute screamer, <laughs> and uh, and I was just thinking, I was talking to my buddy today about this. It's like we need a chance. That lad needs a proper song. I mean, I know he got he's a scouser in the team, or when my mate sang me that song. I said, oh, "That's not good enough, though, is it?" Trent really needs a song, you know. What he does for us, game in, game out. And now he's moved into the middle of the pitch and he's just, you know, people are going, well, maybe Jude Bellingham's not so good after all, <laughs> you know? Um, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that's just that that's just right up there, isn't it? You know, anywhere around there, there's a very high percentage he's putting in the back of the net and it was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and I'm really happy for him. There's so many good things, so many good stories now starting to come out of the team and this season. Because for a while there, we were all a little bit lost and thinking, Jesus, what's the point? Where's the focus? What can we, it's so difficult to pull anything good out of this. But now it's like, there's a real resurgence, that whole Trent story as well. It's just, that's my favorite. I'll look back on this season, I'll just think of Trent. Trent went into the middle of the pitch and told everybody to go fuck themselves, basically. <laughs> and became the best midfield player in the Premiership in, in, in an instant. The second he went into the middle of the pitch, he was like, number one, number one, number one, number one, <laughs> number one, number one. And he's just like, shut the fuck up, all of you. <laughs> so, and he could only go from strength to strength. I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. And when he scored the goal, it was just the cherry on the cake. It really was. And the fact that Mo was involved in it as well, the little hand up, little send up. And the way he celebrated as well, it was like, what else did you expect? You know, it's like, <laughs> it's just brilliant. Yeah, the 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 feel good factor is back uh, with Liverpool now. You know, I'm totally. But, but, but what would you say, Brian? Just staying with you though, because there was a very interesting mm-hmm. piece on Empire of the Cop, um, which is a great website. And the editorial said something that I said myself uh, over the past few weeks that we still need a right back to to be in behind Trent to give him even more freedom. I think the the guy from Empire of the Cop, the editor there, um, fantastic uh, uh, line. He said, well, Pirlo never had to cover at right back. And we should, so, you know, we should try to let, to make the, to get the best out of Trent. We should just leave him in midfield so he doesn't have to do the running back. What do you reckon, Brian? 
Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's been a weakness in our squad for the longest time. Every well, I you know, I, I don't know if everybody's been saying it, but I've always thought, you know, I love Trent to pieces. He's brilliant, and and the problem with Trent is not many players in the world can do what he does. And so, if he gets injured, God forbid, or you know, goes through a bad run of form, you're kind of um, you're caught between a rock and a hard place. Whereas, you know, we've got. Um, you know, more than ample cover on the left. I've always felt like we've always been a bit short on, on the right, even though, you know, uh, Joe can go and do a good job there. Uh, it's not quite the same. I, I definitely think, I, I, I agree with you. I think, I mean, it's early days in this whole experiment with him moving into the pitch, and, and it's it's a real hybrid system, right? The, the fact that he's playing. I mean, what I like about him now is that it's 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 been made official. That he's he's in the middle of the pitch because before that he was just showing up all over the park. You'd be like, what, what the fuck is what's Trent doing on the left wing? What, what the fuck's going on? Like we, we were like saying, well, has, has Klopp just said you just do what you want, go go wherever you want to go, whatever. But now that we all, I think that's another part of it as well. We, we I think a lot of fans feel a lot better now because we 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 have a better sense of what the plan is with Trent. We know that he's playing two positions. We know that he's been given kind of a free role to an extent. So when we see him in different unusual places, we're not that panic is not setting in, and it's not like we're not thinking, "What's the team doing now?" It's uh, now we think, "Oh, we're we're playing this really sophisticated new system." Um, but yeah, I think yeah, I I mean, what ever happened to the, the to the lad we signed uh, from? Scotland. Oh, yeah, he was injured. Yeah, long term injury. Kelvin Ramsey. Is he, you, know, you would you would know that, wouldn't you? What 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 did Kelvin Ramsey Kel right? Yes, they do. But I think was it a leg break, Doug? Do you remember? I can't remember. Uh, knee injury, I think. I think it was a knee injury. A knee injury. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. But Doug, so you that know, player initially. Oh, oh, yeah, he was. Yeah, I, I mean, was say, he was. He was the. Yeah. he was the back. The genuine backup. He was like the the new Andy Robinson. People were saying, you know, he's that good. He or he has the potential to be that good. Uh, you know. So, yeah, but, but he was. But he was there as a backup. I, you know, as opposed to having a starting yeah. right back who's always there to give Trent more of a license. What do you reckon, Doug? What do you reckon on this? Yeah, I think. I think it's, uh, it's it's quite apt that we're obviously speaking about obviously Calvin Ramsey um, because I think he's a player who I think will probably come will come good at some point. Um, but no, Trent Trent is getting the, the license to roam around in the midfield role, and he, he he's he's loving it. He he he's dictating the play. He's been very very good. I want to go to uh, I want to discuss about Alison Decker if I may. Oh, absolutely. I thought he was absolutely flawless last night. I know he only had one save to make, but it was almost Alison Rams's Becker Neuer, sweeper keeper, all this. Uh, I thought I thought Alison was absolutely outstanding yesterday. Um and you know what? He's got hundred and one clean sheets now, which is absolutely amazing. He is gonna go down as probably one of our greatest ever goalkeepers. He has been that he has been that good. Um, and obviously, it's it's very apt that I have to speak about Alison. It's two years to the day that he did score uh, to make to save our top four hopes in that 2021, uh, 2020, 2021 season. Yes. Um, so it's my great, uh, my, my biggest regret, Doug. It's my biggest football Liverpool regret because I had given up. It was that deep into injury time. And I really needed the toilet from about 70 minutes onwards. And it got to injury time. And I was like, no, forget it. I cannot. I give up. We've, lo we've lost it. Everything is broken. I went into the toilet, a broken man. I came out and I, I saw the screen. I had no sound, you see, because I was listening with headphones. And yeah. they were celebrating. And they seemed to be celebrating with the goalkeeper. Man, what a, what a moment. I mean, I wish I'd seen it. <laughs> but you know, and it serves me right for giving up on this Liverpool team because it's a ridiculous thing to give up on. But uh, uh, obviously, to our obviously to our sort of our, our our audio listeners, if you haven't seen Alison Becker's interview with Sky Sports after that, please go and watch it. It's one of the yes. best interviews you'll ever Beautiful. Like see. Beautiful, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah, Alison Becker, great shout, great shout. Um, but yeah, so I mean, that was the third goal, though, screaming into the top corner. 
No, it was, it was brilliant. It was a good performance. So we're moving on. You know, we've got two games left. Aston Villa, of course. Um, Aston Villa, I got the, the latest results somewhere. I can't. I can't. I, I, I've lost it, but in front of me. It's on too many, too many tabs open, you know, more tabs than, do, do they call tabs cigarettes? More tabs than, I don't know, my, my granny. Um, and I've got them all open, but I can't remember which one, when, which one it is. But I remember, anyway, Aston Villa at home, they've won their last five matches. Away from home, they uh, won two, drawn one, and lost two of the last five. So in the last three away matches, they've drawn one and lost two. Um, oh. night, sorry, huh? oh no, sorry, there was a there was an echo or something, sorry, um, but yeah, uh, so Aston Villa, their, their resurgence under Unai Emery is fabulous. They beat uh Tottenham uh in the last match 2 1, and it, it could be very difficult, but we're at Anfield, their away form isn't as good as their home form. Are you are you confident, Nigel, that we can keep the pressure on, keep the pressure up? Absolutely. Yeah. Who's who wants to come to Antic? It's that old old story again. I was talking to my manager there. I'm in work, just in case anybody. And uh, he said to me this morning, the last game Aston Villa played, they were playing a really yeah. really high line, like up on the halfway line. Uh, and and he said we'd score four or five against Villa. He's a United fan. And he said to me, he said to me earlier on, you can score four or five if they try and play that high line. Mo Salah will have a field day, he said. So hopefully they come up and try and play a high line against our strikers at the moment. I don't think I don't think Emery would though. He seems too pragmatic. Yeah, well that's that, I didn't see their last game, so that's just what I was told. But mm. like you've got to, to be looking at getting behind their full backs again and getting like Gakpo dropping into the hole again and Curtis Jones pushing in behind him and coming around on a loop again in behind to try and get on. I think, like, I, I don't think it's a coincidence that he scored those two goals recently. Very similar goals. The one against Spurs and the one last night. Um, that he's been told, if anyone heard the interview with Jorgen last night, he's, he was nearly taking credit for the first goal. He said that uh, he's been telling he's been telling Curtis to get into the box. So I think this is a plan that Mo is going to try and play the ball into the space, kind of around maybe a full back and both centre backs, and curling away from the goalkeeper on the edge of the six yard box to let Curtis come in around the back and attack the ball on the volley because he's done it twice now. And I think we could be seeing it again fairly fairly soon. And if if it doesn't work, then like. Somebody else coming into it from another position, say like Gakpo, maybe attacking the front of the six-yard box. If if Curtis wants to cut it back or doesn't get a shot or it gets deflected or something like that, so I think that's one to watch definitely. Uh, I think that's that's it's no coincidence that that ball has been played into that space at all. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. No, it's it's great, and uh, I can't remember. I, I, well, I have a look at the Aston Villa lineup in a minute, but uh, a couple of couple of facts, pre-match facts for you, um, Brian. Um, Liverpool have won nine of their last ten Premier League games against Aston Villa. The one exception being the seven-two. So there you go. Of course, the seven-two we all <laughs> remember. remember. There'll be elements of the other nine victories out of ten that we don't remember because we just seem to beat them, uh, you know, fairly regularly and routinely. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, having another fact, fact number two, factoid number two. These are from Google. Having won three and lost just one of their six Premier League visits to Anfield between two thousand and nine and twenty fifteen, Aston Villa have now lost their last four away league games against Liverpool. So it's looking good. Aston Villa, have you seen anything of them? Do you think that they're they're dangerous? Is there something that, you know, I don't know. How um, are you feeling about it, bro? I tell you, I seen them play against Newcastle and it was one of the most impressive performances of the whole season. I thought myself, I watched that game and they were amazing. They reminded me of Klopp's... Uh... No, wait there. They reminded me of... Uh... Rafa Benitez's team came to Liverpool 
and uh, do you remember who, who was he managing before he came? Valencia who just played as... Valencia, they tore yeah. straight. Pablo, yeah, they, they, it reminded me of that performance. They were so direct and they were just all over Newcastle. Newcastle were like riding on a crest of a wave at the time. Uh, this is about a month ago, and I remember thinking to myself, Jesus, Emery, Emery, some manager actually, you know, he's getting a tune out of these lot, and it's it's uh, I mean, it's kind of tapered off a little bit um it, recently but they they have it in them uh they're very direct they 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 shift the ball quickly so I, I i mean i expect us to win our last two games but i'm this one in particular i wouldn't get ahead of ourselves because they could hurt us pretty quickly particularly with us we talk about them playing a high line but we also play a high line you know um so it'll be interesting um but i like what he's doing with them um and uh I think um, uh, not to be. Oh, I, I'm talking about stats. I heard a great stats today. Something like that. Mo Salah has got more go, more yellow cards for taking off his shirt than United have scored goals at Anfield in the past ten years. <laughs> yeah, this one. <laughs> <laughs> this Something along those lines. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, no. The, it's it'd be it'll be a great game. I expect us to win it. Um, but uh, they're a dangerous side. You know, and there's a lot of quality in there, and he's got them playing really, really well. So I think we're going to have to be right at it from the get-go, and hmm. you know, not take our eye off. And not, it's not a banker by any stretch of the imagination. But you know, Absolutely. I was going to say to you, unlike uh, you guys, in terms of oh, it's ten percent or fifteen percent of top four, I'm completely different. I think it's much higher because we're breathing down both Newcastle and Man United's neck. They've got three games to play, and in any of those next two games for both of them, if either one of those teams drop points in any way, shape, or form, it's it's not really about who they're playing. It's about the pressure. You know, it's about this incessant pressure that they're under. You know, they, and it, they're not easy games, you know, that, that they're playing. They're not necessarily bankers. United are not good on the road. They're going to uh, Bournemouth. Brighton can turn anybody over on their day. Chelsea, who knows what Chelsea team is coming to show up, particularly with Poch now penciled in. A lot of those players were like, well, I fancy that, <laughs> you know? Um, so, I, I mean, I think there's something for us to watch the next two weekends, you know, to pay close attention. As long as we just do our job, keep the pressure on. Um, because nobody's expecting us to get top four. We are, we're under no pressure. We've now quali we've qualified for European football. You know, it's, it was a it was a difficult season. We'll take that. The pressure's all on them, and Newcastle are not used to that. Those players are not used to this. They're not used to this kind of level of pressure where it you know it's fine margins. And I still don't believe in this Man United side. You know, there's still a lot of mistakes there, and and they've been a little bit leggy over the past two or three games. Uh, a, a lot of commentators have commented on it as well. So if you look at their the amount of goals they score, it's, they've got the lowest goal scoring ratio of the top four teams I've seen in a long, long time. So I don't know. I think it's a little bit higher. We'll see this weekend, but I, I'm I'm quietly optimistic. <laughs> You're talking me into it. Happen. You're talking <laughs> me into, into this optimism brewing the percentage. <laughs> the percentage is rising. Um, excellent stuff, uh, Doug. Uh, you've been you watch uh, a lot of football. You must have seen Aston Villa quite a few times this season. I don't know if you saw their last match. In their last match, they um, they lined up with Martinez, Emmy Martinez in goal, with Ashley Young, Conza, Mings, and Moreno uh, as a back four. Uh, then with Leon Bailey, John McGinn, David Luiz, and uh, David Luiz, Douglas Luiz, excuse me, and uh, Ramsey. Uh, in midfield, and then Buendia and Watkins up front. Um, uh, Douglas Luiz scored and uh, Jacob Ramsey scored uh, for them in their 2-1 victory over Tottenham Hotspur. They're a dangerous team. The 4-4-2 is actually a bit of a bugbear of Jurgen Klopp teams over the years, although that's in our old formation, in this new formation, who knows. Um, but uh, yeah, it, they are dangerous, Doug. We are going to have to be wary, even if we've won every single one of our final uh, Anfield games of the season under Jurgen Klopp. We've won the last six uh, of the final home games of the season. So the uh, omens are good, but we do have to be wary. Who out of Aston Villa has caught your eye this season? Uh, I've watched Villa quite a lot this season, actually. I did a, did a watch loan of them beating Newcastle 3-0, and I thought they were excellent. 
I thought Watkins especially. He's he's a player that's gone under the radar for me, Ollie Watkins. You know, I think a lot of people are obviously looking at obviously Harry Kane and Ivan Tony, but then you look at like strikers who have like got goals in the Premier League, and I think Ollie Watkins is one of those one of those players. Um, I've got to say as well, I think Martinez is is the is a very good goalkeeper. Um, as well, uh, I don't see him staying around very, very longer. Moreno, the uh, left back, is a very interesting one. Um, he was excellent in that Newcastle game, and I thought, I thought, yeah, Aston Villa have got a very, very good, you know, left back on the on the trail there. Uh, Ramsey as well scored in that game, um, as well. Um, Villa are a very, very good side. Unai Emery has done a magnificent job. They they were seventeenth when he took over. They're now sitting sixth place, which is, which is amazing, amazing for a team like Aston Villa. Um, and they deserve to win against Tottenham on, um, on Saturday there. So it's going to be a very, very tricky game, but I would fancy us against anybody at this moment in time. I really would. Excellent answer. Yeah, uh, I would as well. I mean, you mentioned Alex Moreno. He's the only one who, who Unai Emery's bought. And so he's turned this team from 17th with basically one signing. And the rest is all organisation and tactics. And, you know, I've I've been there, you know, uh, saying this for years because, you know, I, I, I followed Unai Emery very closely uh, from when he, he was at PSG. And he's a brilliant manager. Even when he was at Arsenal, I was telling everybody, you know, he's just been unlucky or, you know, made a few bad choices in the transfer market, but he needs more time. And they were all, you know, they Arsenal completely lost faith in him. And the fans did, which was a bit stupid on their part, because he's a brilliant manager. Um, Nigel, uh, the, 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 of that lineup, the one that stands out to me as the one we can get at really is Ashley Young at right back at, uh, you know, 45 years old, or however, however old he is. Um, so, what you know, is that the, the glaring weakness to you too, Nigel? Absolutely. Absolutely. Get Diaz on the ball. Get Diaz on the ball and get Gakpo coming behind him and Curtis Jones running off them. And he has got to be, we've got to be looking for down that channel. Down that, Robbo even last night was attacking into the spaces and creating things. And you got Curtis running along the outside behind Robbo last night and Robbo giving the ball into the gaps. And that's, that's definitely, you watch, I've said it before on here, uh, you watch our games down the years when we go at at fullbacks down that channel between the fullbacks or outside them that's where we're at our most dangerous and he's got and you know he's definitely there for the take and i think you know he's like he's old basically you know he's he could get diaz running at him and he could be on the yellow card in five minutes it's a good point. It's a very good point. Um, I'm not sure I would play Diaz, though. Uh, Brian, Diaz or Jota in that position to attack Ashley Young? What do you think, Brian? Um, I don't know. I think I'd go with Diaz as well. Yeah. And okay. I can see, uh, I can see uh, Trent firing the balls over, um, you know, from the right-hand side. I think we, well, we'll probably overload them on the right. You know, just give them and then just quickly switch over. Um, but yeah, yeah, obviously. I mean, it's it's a very solid team. And I think I think McGinn as well. He's a great, great uh, player. You know, really solid. Um, kind of kind of get mark him or t take him out of the game. He's very influential for that team. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I didn't think I didn't realize actually Young was still getting into the team regularly. So that's that's uh, something to look forward to. You know, getting seeing him getting turned inside out, particularly with Diaz. That'd be a brilliant. Put him on the floor. Put him on his arse a couple of times. You know, <laughs> an extra little bit of love there. You know, can you imagine that at home? Actually, Young on his arse over and over again. It'd be great. Nigel, you wanted yeah. to come in here. Yeah, it would be great. Yeah, just a good point. If we're going running at them, I'd like to see possibly not quite the, the, the ball that, that uh, we set up for the goal last night. Pull the ball back to the edge of the box between the two centre backs and let somebody say uh, a Jordan Henderson or a Fabinho or even a Curtis Jones come running onto the ball and have a strike from the edge of the box or outside the box. I think that could be an, an avenue to a goal as well. 
So just I, I think uh, City did that quite quite effectively a couple of games ago, didn't they? No Absolutely, I, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's one benefit of potentially, you know, getting more right back cover behind Trent is that he can, you know, his long shots. I mean, they're, they're just superb. It's just a, it's a cannonball, you know, waiting, waiting to happen. Um, in the chat, we've got uh, great, great comments coming in as usual. Thank you so much. Um, you know, uh, Pan of Scouse says, uh, given the chance, I think, um, sorry, he was talking about Jacob uh, Ramsey. Uh, he, he's good on the ball and pretty solid. The kid needs a chance. Uh, I hope that he... Uh, he might be talking about Kelvin Ramsey as opposed to Jacob Ramsey. Excuse me. I messed that one up. Uh, but OK. Um, yeah. So uh, either Ramsey's, they, they both, they're both very good. Jacob Ramsey as well. An underrated player for, for, for Aston Villa. He scores very highly on progressive carries and touches in the attacking penalty box and getting into good areas. He's got, he's in the 84th percentile for non-penalty goals, having scored five goals this season from midfield with five assists. Very good, Jacob. Ramsey and he's only uh, 21 years old he's going to be 22 in about 12 days or something like that so happy birthday to him um in the yes I don't know we've got to wrap this up because uh, you know things uh things uh oh God, I've got responsibilities uh, these days um so I'm going to stop sharing the screen to have my 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 fellows uh back uh around me although you can't see that on YouTube but I can see them in front of me, all smiling, all happy. It's been seven wins in a row, three clean sheets in a row. Conate, Virgil, all of that stuff. My final question to all of you is how far away are we really? Because I'm not sure this has been 100% convincing. Sorry to be a, a, a Desmond Downer or a Debbie Downer. Um, I don't think it's been entirely convincing uh, up against you know the elite teams. I, I, question to you is, uh, I'm going to start with Doug. Um, how far away are we from, from, from Manchester City's level? Um, I think we are a wee bit behind them, but I don't think we're that far off. I don't think we're that far off. Maybe a couple of signings here or there or two. Um, and I think we'll be right back up there because, uh, I think Arsenal have had their chance this season and then they blew it. Interesting. Just a couple of signings. What midfield? Couple I would of say midfield. I would. I would. I would say midfield definitely. Um, maybe a right back. Maybe maybe another centre back. But I think. Uh, well, that's it that's be, four uh, signings, Doug. That's four already. Two midfielders, <laughs> right back, and a centre back. I know. I know. It is. Um, I, I would. I would. I would say anything between two or three midfielders would, would do me good. Two or three midfielders, a right back and a centre back. I agree with you. I agree with you, Nigel. What about you? How far away are we? About six signings. Six signings. Okay. Yeah. Who? Like three what midfielders. Kind of... mm -hmm. Three midfielders at least, maybe four. Mm -hmm. Right back. Mm -hmm. Um, possibly a left back and possibly a centre half. Okay. Um, wow. I, I think I think this is a squad game. It's a long game, and we if, if we're going to be hoping to compete at all levels. There needs to be a squad. We need to have, like a few seasons ago, when we had the cover in every position. We need, mm -hmm. we need cover for Fabinho. We need cover for Trent at right back. We need cover for Trent in midfield. We need uh, a cover for, say, Gakpo playing in that position as well. You've got to remember, like we're losing Milner, we're losing Bobby, we're losing Oxley Chamberlain, we're losing Keita. You know, we're we're losing. A lot of players. We're losing a lot of bodies. Might be the some of them might be made of wheat a bit, but we're we're we've got to replace. Like there's no point in selling uh eight or nine players and signing two. It's it's just that the, the, the it has to be rotated. Bob Paisley said it every year, buy two or three players. Well, we haven't really done that. You know what I mean? People are going and people are getting injured. And we just, we're still suffering from three seasons ago when we barely qualified for the Champions League with a great run. We're doing, we're doing it again. But we've got to have a squad. We're threadbare again. Yeah, I, I can't keep happening. 
Yeah, it's, uh, I, I totally agree. I mean, you know, all this all this bounce about seven wins in a row is very good and it is very enthusiastic and we're right to be happy about it. But, you know, we can look back earlier in this season, even post-World Cup since January, you know, losing to Brentford and then Brighton uh, in, in successive games, lost 3-1 against Brentford, 3-0 against Brighton. We followed that up with a 0-0 draw at Anfield against the, the worst Chelsea side since the, I don't know, 80s. And then, you know, Wolverhampton Wanderers beat us 3-0 as well. So those four games from the 2nd of January to the to the 4th of February, absolute nightmare. We've got to learn from those kind of things, Brian, before we can really say we're back challenging, uh, you know, with the with the best, with Manchester City, uh, you know, those cheats. What, what is that? Is that fair, Brian? Um, yeah, yeah, yes and no. I mean, I take your point. I understand what you're saying, but I think also we were a team in transition or, you know, we're in transition anyway, we're kind of, we're moving, we're more, this new team is, is more settled, more mature than this new identity is taking shape. But like people forget that we kind of move, we, you know, all those people that we just mentioned, they're all great players, but and we do need to replace them for sure. I mean, I, I do. Th I don't think we're that far off, but I do think we need quality. Uh, we need an, in, an influx of the, who's the new James Milner, you know, who's the new Bobby. You know, we need players. We don't need fillers. You know, we, we need people who can push players in in positions. And it is. It's right. It is a squad game. That's. That, I think that's again. We were we were taught that lesson when we chased all those. We chased everything last season. We paid for it this season. You know, um, so I like, I mean, I like what Klopp's been saying about the progression of this team, where we're at. We're starting to see the fruition of that. I'm, it's starting to, it's starting to kind of form in my head. But I think, I think also for, for just the feel good factor amongst the fan base as well, the club needs to do some business this summer, you know, um, for that, you know, they, they need to sign four players. And I say players, I mean players <laughs> that that will alleviate the bad blood that's there with with the fans. Even like I'm a very pragmatic person when it comes to football and, and FSG, I, you know, but even I can sense there, there is kind of a, a growing unease about this. If we go if we do another summer where we're not active or it's just about enough, I think that will just push a lot of people over the edge. And once Liverpool Twitter gets into full effect, you know, I don't, I mean, FSG haven't really felt what li Liverpool Twitter is like when it's really, when the, you know, the I am Sauron is shining brightly on you, <laughs> you know. Uh, so if they know what's good for them, I think they will, um, they will sign at least three legit starting, you know, players who can, who can go straight into the team. And but uh, I'm looking forward to the business. I don't think we're that far off. And I think next season we will see, you know, we forget how many new players are in this team. You know, if you just look at the, the lineup and think, how long has that player been with us? How long has that player been with us? They've all been with us like one, maybe two seasons, mm. you know, and uh, the new mm. stalwarts. But um, yeah, I know I'm, I'm, uh, we're the only team that can challenge City really at this stage still, uh, with the only manager um and um we had a we had a dip we've been through it and now you know the dip's over so onwards and upwards love it and allison has got his beard back that's why we're getting all these <laughs> uh beautiful clean sheets you know people, you're sleeping on the fact that he's a very beautiful man as well that hasn't even mentioned you know <laughs> player of the season comes to training on a horse Excellent. nothing he can't do yeah, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I am genuinely uh, looking forward to, to to the summer and the signings, and there's a, definitely a feel good factor amongst the, the, the club again. Yeah, no, totally. It's absolutely marvelous answer. Thank you very much. Thanks to to all of you for for sharing your thoughts. And everybody, check out Doug's channel, the Dugout Football Channel. Absolutely superb. Thank you to Nigel. Thank you to Brian, and thank you to Doug. Just going to leave you. I started with uh, a, a poem, the first verse of the poem, In the Beginning by Dylan Thomas. And I'm going to give you the last verse, and it's up to you to look up that poem and read it all because it's absolutely freaking brilliant. But here is the last verse to play us out. Um, it's, yeah, in the beginning was the secret brain. 
The brain was selled and soldered in the thought before the pitch was forking to a sun, before the veins were shaking in their sieve, bloodshot and scattered to the winds of light, the ribbed original of love. Thank you, everybody. You'll never walk alone.